have live coverage of the night. Blake for the front of his car that said prime time. And he certainly has lived up to his nickname in many respects. Lansford to kick it off for Los Angeles. Thomas brings it out and gets across the 20 to about the 22 before he's hauled down there. Well, we talked about how the yardage in the first half had not been what was expected. Look at the Rams, 219 yards. And again, even though they haven't had a great deal of success, they have been balanced. And look at that, 12 rushing yards for the Atlanta Falcons. They are not going to be successful if they don't do a whole lot better than that. Yeah, you're not going to do much in this league if, if you don't rush for more than 12 yards in the first half. But it's, it's not like they don't have the ability. They certainly have the ability to do it. Chris Miller. With Haynes in motion. Under pressure. And he's finally run out of bounds on the far side. Mike Wilcher and Sean Miller were chasing him. Doug Reed had a little chase going on as well. You know, one of the things I noticed when Miller scrambled out of the pocket, his receivers came back to block for him. <laughs> which is a little bit contrary to what you want. You don't want them to come back to block because you don't plan on running. You want to be you, open. Hey, deep, baby, go deep. And let me throw this thing. I don't want to run with it, but his receivers that time came back and attempted to block for Miller instead of going downfield and giving him a target. He got back to the line of scrimmage as well. Well, actually, he may have lost a yard on the play, so it's second down and 11. Dean Lang banging up in there. And good second effort. Gets him out to about the 24. Sean Miller, 98, on the bottom of the pile again. One of the reasons they're not, the Falcons have not been able to run well is Jamie Dukes is, a, is naturally a, a guard. And the, and the right tackle, Hoover, who's starting at tackle, is naturally a guard. The starting center is out, and the starting left guard is out. And Tommy Robinson, the left guard, is naturally a tackle. <laughs> And Bill Fralick, who's at the right tackle, just came into camp this week. So there you have it. So you want to know why they're not being able to run a lot of it has to do with these guys who are out of position. Fralick, the right guard. Miller again getting away from the pressure. Kevin Green on him, and he's going to get it. There it is. It happened again. Miller outside. And this time, Michael Haynes, 81, looks at Miller, doesn't know what to do, is confused, starts going back, and never does attempt to go downfield and give Miller an opportunity to throw the football. So it brings up fourth down. Scott Fulhag on to punt it away. Daryl Henley back to receive for Los Angeles. is 10 high and short and out of bounds just into Los Angeles territory they'll mark it at about the 49 well next Sunday you'll see a CBS NFL double header right here on most of these same stations in game one some of you will see the Philadelphia Eagles take on the Washington Redskins others of you will see the Dallas Cowboys right here in Atlanta against these same Atlanta Falcons in game two it's Minnesota Vikings in a central division matchup with the always tough Chicago Bears. So check the local listings in your area for the game and time. It all begins next Sunday with the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Jim Everett will try to get it going again. Good field position for Los Angeles. First and 10 at their own 49. Robert Del Pino. For a gain of about three to the Atlanta 48 in the grasp of John Rady, number 59. Yeah, Rady's one of those young inside backers that Marion Campbell loves, and they play, the Falcons play their inside backers off the ball deep, and once the snap is taken, they key those guards, and then once they're sure what's happening, then they explode up inside, and Rady looked inside, saw the handoff, and man, he was there like a bullet, put the hit on the guy and bring him down. CBS Sports Wire keeping you up to date. What else is happening in the NFL today? Second down and seven. Lots of time for Everett. And a completion to Henry Eller. 
Inside the 25, Bobby Butler with the hit immediately. But it'll be a Los Angeles first down. Cornerback Butler's off of Eller deep. And one of the things the corners think is, all right, now, when Eller comes off the ball, there he is. No one's on him. Safety that was up. Look at this separation. My gosh, no wonder Eller got open. And with the arm that Everett has, man, that's a mismatch. Oops, mismatch. My tongue in the teeth there. Had my tongue over my eye tooth and couldn't see what I was saying. From the 33. Greg Bell running hard inside the 30. Bobby Butler again making the tackle for Atlanta. Andre Bruce, 93. We've talked about him earlier. This guy was the number one draft choice last year. And that time Bell high stepped it right over him. But Bruce is women. We haven't heard a lot about him. And one of the things that Bruce wanted to do in this game was to be able to be turned loose. He wants to come after the quarterback. He wants to rush the passer. And that time is thinking of rushing the passer enables Bell to go right by him with the run. Bell has carried 16 times for 85 yards. Take the Bell. Eller behind him and incomplete. Ballard hammered as he goes down. Jesse Tuggle and Evan Cooper. Yeah, there's one of those deep crossing routes we were talking about. A little counteraction. The counteraction by the back and the quarterback is allowed. Watch the linebackers. See them. Notice that inside Tuggle and Rady. Notice they stayed inside. And now all of a sudden Rady says, whoa. I mean, that's Tuggle 58. Whoa. My guy got behind me. He turns and gets underneath. That time Ellard, no lane at all for Everett to try to get the ball in. Evan Cooper, the strong safety, took advantage and put a real hit on him. Third and five from the Atlanta 28. Short drop by Everett, who will run. Sliding down as he gets to the 20. And he has some words for Marcus Cotton, who was all over him. Yeah, Cotton. Marcus Cotton, a lot of times what happens, what happens is when a quarterback of all people get beyond you and there's Cotton, Everett's down. Now that should have been a flag. There's your flag. Throw the flag. Now, if you want to protect your quarterback, throw the flag. But and Everett gives him a shot. But Cotton's a frustrated linebacker. The guy's been hurt. He hasn't panned out. He's he was supposed to be in there with Bruce as the two as the two tandem, these rookie guys, but low frustration. Everett paid for it, but he got the first down. Well, Looking for the seam, down to the 15-yard line. Bell has really been the workhorse, and when you consider, Terry, the fact that he has only had really less than two weeks of workouts before today, he's already carried 17 times for 90 yards. Yeah, but he said, I'm in the best shape I've ever been, and one week of practice, maybe that's all he's actually had two weeks now, and everyone thought possibly gas and Green, the number one draft choice last year out of USCL UCLA, would be the starting tailback after the really good preseason he had, but Bell is Robinson's man, and he's going to run him. Gaston Green in there to give Bell a rest on second down and five. Green has it. Gain of about two. Tim Gordon, the free safety with excellent run support meeting him right about at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's two different styles of tailbacks for these for these Rams. Number one, when Bell is running with the ball, he is Robinson's type of back. He is a boom, a power runner. Guy sees it and explodes, whereas Green is not a power runner, but he's the guy, if he sees the scene, he has the speed and he outruns everyone. Green the power, gas and then uh, gas and Green the speed, Bell the power. Third down and two. Green picked up three, the ball at the 13 of Atlanta. Rams leading 17-14, 9-10, left to go in the third quarter. Everett getting away from the pressure, into the end zone for a touchdown. Oh, Robert Moore. Moore and Everett head on. At about the two, and Jim Everett won that battle. Robert Moore put his head down, had no idea where Everett was. Notice the short drop. There's the little five-step drop. The rush goes beyond Everett. He sees the seam, takes off. Now he's close to the goal line. Moore had an opportunity to knock his head off, put his head down. Everett slid right over the top. Gutsy run by Everett. 
13 yard touchdown run Mike Lansford with the extra point and the Rams on their first possession of the second half with 901 left to play in the third quarter now lead by 10. The Los Angeles Rams have moved out to a 10 point lead and Jim Everett's gutsy 13 yard run and you can see back in the background there Jim Everett's new haircut. Yeah I got him a flat top state. Said he, every time he went, he got about two inches of his haircut, and it cost him 12, 15 bucks. And he said, this one cost me 4 50 and I gave the guy a quarter tip. So he said, flat tops are back in style. <laughs> I like it. Looks good on him. I might try it myself, but no one know I'd cut the top. <laughs> so they wouldn't know it's flat, right? You and me both, pal. <laughs> Lansford's kick. Taken by Thomas near the goal line. And George Thomas hammered as he crosses the 15. A penalty flag goes down upon the tackle. George Bethune, a rookie linebacker out of Alabama with the hit. And a rookie referee, Dale Hamer. There's no foul on the play. There's no foul on the play. So the infamous inadvertent flag and no penalty. And Atlanta will have a first and 10 at their own 12. Let's look again at Jim Everett's 13 yard run for the Rams touchdown. Yeah if you're going to win championships you've got to just turn it all loose and I think one of the real bright spots for the Rams is the fact that right now Everett holds his poise gets in there now do I go down do I become an athlete we've got to win this game yeah I'm going to go down I'm putting my head down I'm running over that safety after all they don't call me the blade for nothing there's the spike <laughs> gotta like that. First and ten of that of their own 17. Miller flips it out incomplete intended for Settle. And the Atlanta offense continues to sputter. Falcons have not started a drive in Rams territory. There have been no turnovers in this game. Atlanta's drives have started at their own 10, their own 15, their own 26, their own 45, their own 30 their own 22 and now their own 17. So they have not enjoyed very good field position. Second and 10. Ron Heller, the tight end at the 35. And still running, but the whistle blew at about the 38. Nell Owens trying to bring him down with some help, but Heller at 6'3 and 240. Holding on. Yeah, these are just real pretty routes. Looks like what one team does, the other team copies. This route's the same route that Holohan runs for the Rams. Release outside, go up the field, clear the linebacker, and then the line, the quarterbacks, both Miller and Everett, have strong arms. And Heller gets outside, and wham, there's that ball. Good shot by Miller. Complete to Gene Lang. Lang to about the 35. 45, that should be Vince Newsom and Michael Stewart on the stop. Yeah, that's they're passing the football, throwing it short here, Steve, and they're using their passing game. You know, they're using it like a running attack now, and and just one, two, three, get set up, and then get rid of the football. Takes the pressure off the offensive line, takes the pressure off the quarterback, and enables them. Get rid of it. They put it in the hands of those backs and let them run with it. Second down and four at the 44. Two tight ends for Atlanta. Miller in trouble and he's down at the 35. Alvin Wright, number 99. Yeah, one thing you don't want to see happen is sacks by tackles coming up the middle. That's the, you know, that's. A quarterback stands in a pocket, and the pocket, the pressure should be driven to the outside. That's why it's called a pocket. And the one place you do not ever want to allow a breakdown is right up in the middle, because then the quarterback has, has everyone in his face, and he either gets sacked, and he definitely can't throw the football right, right up the middle, great pressure, gets the sack. Rams were the best at that last year in the National Football League. That'll bang oh. for the first down. Second and third effort. And Brent Baronez finally has to make the tackle, but not before Settle goes for a first down. When teams like to pressure you, like to blitz, like to rush, the thing to slow them down with is 
Show the draw, delayed draw this time, a deep eye set. Settle gets in there, reads the hole, and then turns on the speed and the power, and then drives for the first down. That's John, a good call. John, uh, only five foot nine, but he weighs 200 pounds, and he picked up 14 yards. The ball at the Rams 49. Penny Flowers trying to turn the corner. Boy, did it shut down in a hurry as Vince Newsom and Michael Stewart came up quickly. Loss of a couple back to the Atlanta 49. Hard to run outside on these guys, isn't it? The pursuit, you know, with so many linebackers, it's hard to get everyone outside to block them. Everyone's flying up the middle, flying off tackle, coming around two guys to the outside. So it's, it's very complicated blocking this type of, of attack by the Rams, especially if you want to take it wide. The best way to do is fake it going wide and then counter and come back inside of it. 5.20 left to go in the third quarter. Los Angeles leading by 10. And second and 12, tips and incomplete. Kevin Green covering and getting a hand on it. Yeah, I, if there's one thing Green's doing better, I noticed today, is that not only is he is an excellent pass rusher, but he has that ability now to drop off and play pass coverage. John Settle on the Atlanta bench being attended to by the trainers. As Settle may be injured, it looks like they're working on his right ankle. And the tape is ready. Third down and 12. Atlanta's still at their own 49. Sean Collins. First down. Oh. Anthony Newman, the safety with the coverage, but Collins with a fine move. A gain of 19. And they move it down to the Rams 31. Collins from Northern Arizona. Very, very highly regarded rookie. Went to the scouting combine tryouts and just wowed everybody. First and ten. Keen Lang. Good yardage, a gain of about five as he gets it to the 26 before Mel Owens and Vince Newsom knock him down. Yeah, see, that's the place to run, go up the middle, because if you take an attack on a power attack, a running attack, straight at it, straight at the middle of a, off, of a defense, then there's no reaction time. You hit, you bounce, you get into the secondary. When you string it out and go wide, you give everyone in the second, uh, in the linebackers and the ends a chance to come off a block, feel in their lanes, and make the stop. John Settle back in the game at the tailback spot on second down and four. Swing pass to Settle, and Mel Owens right there. Settle apparently completed the play. There's an injured Los Angeles Ram down at the 30-yard line, and it appears it's Alvin Wright. Well, the Rams with a timeout for the injury to right with 4.15 left to go in the third quarter. Coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams very upset with the officials because the injury to Alvin Wright, he feels, might have been caused by an illegal block of some kind, maybe even a clip. Wright walked off under his own power. John Robinson was also out on the field jawing at the officials. No penalty was assessed. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Third down and eight. Atlanta at the Los Angeles 29. And John Settle with the ball. Inbounds and knockdown as he gets to the 25. Gain of about four. James Washington and Daryl Henley on the stop. Prevent. One of the reasons that people say, why didn't they? Why didn't the Falcons throw the football? But it, if you can catch a defense that is in man coverage and you pitch the ball to a back like that and you run everyone off, there's no support. There's no one come up to make the tackle. And that was the thinking behind that pitch to settle. No one there to make the tackle. Get him outside, and we got a touchdown. Didn't happen. Paul McFadden in his sixth year of Youngstown State. Chris Miller will hold it 
at the 33. It'll be a 43-yard attempt. And it is wide to the right. Three minutes and six seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the score remaining, Los Angeles 24 and Atlanta 14. And like so many kickers after a miss, alone with his thoughts. It is a lonely job as he misses one, and the Rams take over first and 10 at their own 26, leading by 10 with 3.06 to go in the third. Every with a quick drop to Ellard, almost picked off, but Ellard got it and has a first down out to the 42. Tim Gordon and Bobby Butler almost picked it off. Yeah, sometimes you get it, you know, when a team is down, they start thinking, well, you know, we've been playing good defense and, and, and we've got the Hail Mary at the half. It kind of broke their back and now Butler comes out. It's the little hitch that we saw the Rams run in the first quarter to Eller. And now Butler comes out and says, yeah, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to gamble. He gambled on the interception and missed it, whereas possibly he could run through and, and at least knock the ball down. A 17-yard game. <laughs> Bell over the pile for a good gain up near midfield. Now let's go to New York for an NFL update. Brent Musburger. Well, Steve, Barry Sanders has scored his first touchdown for the Detroit Lions, the Heisman Trophy winner, four consecutive carries here in the second half, and the Lions take a four-point lead on the Phoenix Cardinals. Back to Steve. Thanks, Brent. Ten-point lead for the Rams, 24-14. And as you see, the waning moments of the third quarter here in Atlanta. The Rams have put together a couple of good drives, and they try to... They'd like to do another one here, which may put the game away for them, but big plays have really been the story. Second down five. Bell again. This time, nowhere to go. 76, Mike Gann, the first to meet him out of Notre Dame. Well, Gann will get credit for the, for the tackle, but the one that, the player that really disrupted the entire offensive program that time was Rady, and Rady came off his linebacker shot. And, man, he came firing in there, split the guard and tackling, got right in the backfield and knocked off all the blockers. And when you do something like that, you know, someone else ought to be able to stand there and make the tackles. But Brady's the guy. I saw it. Hey, John, I saw it. Congratulations. It's a heck of a job. Third and five now. Still at the 48 of Los Angeles. Overthrown by Everett, who wants a penalty on the play. Flipper Anderson was the intended receiver. And Andre Bruce had pressure, and there is a flag down. And it is deep in the Atlanta secondary, and it is going to be against the Falcons. And it's another penalty that really hurts Atlanta because it would have brought up a fourth down. And prime time. Illegal contact. Number 23 at the defense. First down. The nine-year veteran Bobby Butler out of Florida State called for the penalty, moving the ball into Atlanta territory at the 47. Pass interference rules have been have been slackened a little bit, and that enabling a, a cornerback and safety to fight a little bit more with the receiver. But one thing you must know is that once that receiver clears five yards down past the line of scrimmage, you cannot put your hands on him and push him, and that's what Butler did. Sixth penalty against Atlanta for 45 yards. Everett to Holohan, complete for a first down at the Atlanta 30. Evan Cooper on the hit. That's just a seam pass. We've seen it five times today, and all that is is that Everett comes up. He looks out across there, and he sees zone. He says, all right. He makes an audible at the line of scrimmage or has a check with me. He calls that play. He drops back, and all he does is read the linebackers. And once he sees them drop deep, he knows it's zone. He turns around and splits the linebackers with the pass to his tight end. It's a gain of 17, and they're going to let time run out here at the end of the third quarter. Holohan with four catches for 55 yards. That's the end of the third quarter here in Atlanta with a score. The Rams 24 and the Falcons 14. Final 15.
15 minutes of the ball game and the Rams retain the ball and remain in control as a costly penalty to Atlanta on third down on this drive has kept the drive going for the Rams. They lead and they've had the ball already for three minutes and six seconds. First and ten at the Atlanta 30. Get rid of it now, and he completes it to Damone Johnson inside the 10. Knocked down at the 8 by Andre Bruce. Everett moving out of the pocket. A good job by the foul. You know, everybody's covered, and there's no pressure on now. Everett looks in there, stays in there. There's the pump, little pump, covered. Oh, go to the right. I'll oh, go ahead and run. Now he's looking downfield, pulls up, and then his eyes take him back across the field, and Damone Johnson did exactly what he's supposed to do. He found the open area, threw his hands up, and gave Everett that big target. Everett got the ball to him. It's a gain of 22 yards. First and goal from the eight. Greg Bell. Touchdown. As he eluded Evan Cooper at about the four-yard line and just waltz right on in there yeah what's happening right now boy is real clear is that this falcon defense has just been on the field so long they're they're hanging their heads down they're tired the offense hasn't been able to give them a break and now bell hesitates going inside there's a little dip back to the outside and now the most this everyone's sliding falling down case is standing there he gets into the end zone but it appears to me right now the falcon defense is a very tired bunch of guys Lansford on to attempt yet another extra point. So now with 14.02 left to play in the ball game, the Rams pad their lead 31-14. We'll return after this word from your local station. Steve Zabriskie and Terry Bradshaw with you in Atlanta. 14.02 left to go in the game, and the Rams up big as they have taken control of the game here in the second half. George Thomas wrestled out of bounds by Frank Stams. And the Rams have really been in control. Ever since, Terry, they scored at the end of the first half on that 46-yard pass play and regained the lead, they've had the momentum on their side, and they've ate up a lot of the clock in this drive. Right. You can see it. Six plays, 74 yards, four minutes, the big play at halftime. And then the penalty coming out on the first drive in the second half in which they had the Rams stop. The Falcons did. Got the penalty, pass interference. They take it in. And then the last drive, uh, just right now, the Falcon defense is exhausted. This offense to the Falcons needs to move the ball. Bell, as you saw, with over 100 yards, five yards of carry. Miller fires and completes it to Michael Hayne, short of the first down. At about the 36 of Atlanta, Jerry Gray hit him immediately. And again, the CBS Sports Wire keeping you up to date on the rest of today's action. Second down and one after the gain of nine. Gene Lang. First down and a couple of more. Close to the 39 before Richard Brown makes the stop along with Alvin Wright. A couple of things that need to happen here. Number one, obviously, the Falcons need to move the football, need to score. Unfortunately for the Falcon defense, they need to score quickly, rapido. They need to score rapidly and, and, and put some points on the board, and then their defense has to go back out on the field and stop the Rams, and then they have to do it again. But right now, Score is the most important thing. Not a field goal, but a touchdown. The only way they get back in the game, 31-14 Los Angeles. John Collins, first down, and he's into Los Angeles territory at the 44. Richard Brown on the tackle. Well, Collins, the number one draft choice. Big kid, big target. He's tough. He'll go over the middle. These are the scouting reports on him that the Falcon coaches tell us about. Goes over the middle, 
He was a tight end in college. There he is lined up next to the tackle, like in a tight end position, but he played tight end at Northern Arizona, so obviously the man can block. He'll get in there and he'll mix it up, but he's very courageous, and we see Miller getting him the ball. 17-yard gain. Miller now with over 200 yards passing. Trying to flip it out to settle. Finally gets it to him, but to no avail. Mike Wiltshire right there. That's just great play by Wilcher. The, it, was a, it was a delayed screen. This time to settle, and the linebackers are all over it, and there's nothing to do. The best thing to do there uh, uh, for the quarterback, Miller, is just throw it up here in the stands and let someone have a souvenir. A loss of two on the play. It's second down and 12 now. And there you see the stats on Miller, over 200 yards on the day. Yeah, hey, that looks good. 17 for 27, nice percentage. Got him a touchdown, no interceptions, over 200 yards. Yeah, I'll take that, you bet. Actually a loss of three, second and 13. Miller over the middle, complete to Sean Collins. Not enough for the first down, but it's at the Rams 40. A reminder again that coming up next here on CBS Sports, following NFL coverage, Yvonne Lendl and Boris Becker, the one and two seeds in the U.S. Open, going for the men's championship right here on CBS coming up and next. And it's hot in New York. It's hot. We've seen them fall out. We even saw a little ball girl yesterday get a little, you know, running across there. Got a little injury, so it ought to be a dandy. These guys don't have an ounce of fat on them, Lindell and Becker. It could be a marathon match, too. 300,000 to the winner. Hmm. What could I do with 300,000? <laughs> For a few sets of tennis, let's go out and play this afternoon. Flip. Nobody pay us. Complete. Stacy Bailey driven back, but Bailey had enough for the first down. It appeared Daryl Henley driving him back behind the mark. Well, this is really smart by Stacy Bailey. You don't realize what a great job Bailey did on the top right of your screen, right in the bottom left. Now Bailey's up top. Notice the blitz down to your left. Bailey has to see the blitz from all the way across the field and run a blitz control. And the blitz control was a five-yard hitch. He did that by reading all the way across, picked up the blitz, Miller saw it, and both of these guys, that time Bailey and Miller, were on the same page. Really a smart play by Bailey. Miller now has completed seven passes in a row. In his first and 10 Atlanta at the Los Angeles 33. 31-14, Rams leading and timeout call. 9.29 left to go in the ball game, and we'll be back. In this game has to do with the play, although the Atlanta defense has played well, of the Los Angeles defense. They have just not allowed the Falcons to do anything on the ground, although they've gotten their passing game going lately. Really, the Rams defense posing enough of a problem that Atlanta can only score on big plays. It's 31 to 14. We've got nine and a half minutes to go in the ball game, and to Terry, it's, it's uh, going to be a problem for Atlanta if they do not get the football going on the ground. Hey, if you don't have your offensive lineman in there, your starters in there from training camp to the opening game, you're not going to have any kind of continuity, especially in the running game. Yeah, maybe throwing, but not running, and it's showing today with Scuttle and Ratloff out, there's no running attack. Not like these Falcons won't. Miller throwing along. Oh! Haynes, touchdown. Three-yard touchdown pass to Michael Haynes, who beats Clifford Hicks for I'm, six. I'm talking one of the great throws. One, two, three, set up, fire the football, and Haynes is nowhere near the defensive back that time. The ball was thrown way before he was able to even get near Clifford Hicks. Outstanding throw, beautiful route. Yeah, you bet. Young guy, number 12. Those 12 numbers are good numbers. <laughs> Yeah, one of them's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> More than one of them. There's a bunch of them. In <laughs> Paul McFadden converts the extra point. Now it's 30 to 21 or 31 21. Bringing the Falcons back to within 10. And they are excited at Fulton County Stadium. Thomas or Ron Brown. Into the outside. Corralled out of bounds by 
Floyd Dixon, one of the few guys that can run with him. A 45-yard return. Well, the Falcons may not be able to run the ball very well, Terry, but Chris Miller's passing it well. He has completed eight in a row for 96 yards and a touchdown on the day. 20 of 30 for 250 yards now. Well, he's doing his job, and what happened now is, is that the Falcons' defense has to stop. They have to stop the Rams. The, the special teams had a chance. They got in there. They messed it up. Had the Rams back on their own 15-yard line. Let them out. Brown, great job. Now the Falcon defense has to come to the occasion. Has to rise. Gaston Green for a loss. Held down by Tony Casillas. Casillas says, I want to be the one nose tackle in the National Football League who is aggressive, who has a lot of ability, who moves around, who's mobile. I don't want to just sit there and be one of those guys, like he says, that people think of a nose tackle and think of guys that live in a cave. He said, not me. I want to be very active. Well, Tony Casillas was very active that time. Loss of four, second down and 14. Rams at their own 39. Gaston Green. Only a couple. Jesse Tuggle stopping him in the middle. You don't ordinarily hear this much noise in Atlanta. Wouldn't it be something if this crowd got a penalty for crowd noise in this ballgame? Yeah, give him an award. You know, give him an award. It's pom pom day and they're using them. Well. Opening game of the year, normally, even for teams that have uh, not been winning over the last few years, you at least have a sellout, and that's not the case here in Atlanta. They want you to win, and yeah, I guess that's the way it ought to be, but the ones that are here are certainly getting vocal. Falcons with six defensive backs. Third and long. Incomplete, no flag. Intended for Henry Ellard and Charles Dimry all over it. Fourth down and ten. Tight coverage. The ideal route that time, since it was a deep route, would have would have been to have the receiver come back to the inside. There would have been no way that Dimery could have gone through the receiver without getting a penalty. That time the receiver ran to the sideline. The ball was a little bit underthrown, allowed Dimery to knock it down. Deion Sanders to receive the punt by Hatcher. Very high for the far sideline. It will go out of bounds and the crowd doesn't like it because primetime didn't get his chance. Right. They're finally starting to show some respect here in the first game for primetime. Number 10, Scotty Campbell, backup quarterback. And the guy to the right, to the left of, Mc, of Millen, number 7, is Rod Dahauer. He calls the plays. But those two quarterbacks, they send in the signals and the signals, the only ones that know what they are, are the quarterbacks because Marion Campbell said, we let them design their own system because quarterbacks just naturally understand quarterbacks. So Dahauer doesn't even know what these guys are sending in. He hopes they're sending in what he tells them. <laughs> First down. Knocked down by Mike Wilcher. Right in the face of Chris Miller. Yeah, that's that blitz control again, and Wilcher's coming from that weak side. And Miller's reading it perfectly, but Wilcher is right in his path. The only thing to do to get away from that is just to turn around and throw it to the other side. Notice Wilcher's free. There's a read by both back, by the tight end, rather, and the quarterback, but Wilcher is right there. So it's second down and 10. Atlanta's still at their own 22. 7-18 left to go in the game. And the Rams leading 31-21. Miller flipping it quickly to Michael Haynes. First down. Whoa. What an adjustment by Chris Miller at the last possible second. Quick hands, quick hands by Michael Haynes. Interesting note here. Michael Haynes, 81, and Sean Collins are both starting receivers for the Falcons, and they're both. There's the signals. Look at this. Choke. Yeah, there's a little wiggle waggle. So both of these guys played at Northern Arizona. Michael Haynes, the guy who just caught that pass, is a second-year guy, and of course the rookie, Sean Collins, is a first-year guy. Same team. Falcons at their own 34. First and 10. Draw to settle. Very little yardage. Yeah. 
Kevin Green in there very quickly to haul him down. In the San Francisco Indianapolis game, Eric Dickerson went over 10,000 career yards rushing. Seventh player in the history of the NFL to do that, and he did it faster than anyone else. Gain of one, second down and nine at the Atlanta 35. 5.53 left to play. Lots of time. Finally complete. Gene Lang in Rams territory. James Washington with the hit. Another first down for Atlanta. When we asked Chris Miller, where have you improved the most? He said, Terry, the place I've improved the most is that I'm coming off my first guy and going to my second receiver now. I'm not just staying in there. He went right, left, and then back to the right and picked up Lane. Excellent job, once again, of Miller going to the third receiver and getting the completion. It's a gain of 18 to the Los Angeles 47. Five minutes, five seconds remaining in the game. Kevin Green gets Miller at the 50-yard line. Green's first sack last year when Houston Hoover was starting at tackle was over Houston Hoover. His first one this year was over Houston Hoover. And now, once again, Green goes over Houston Hoover for his second sack today, third sack today. Fritz Schirmer looking on at his Rams defense. As the Rams try to hold, leading by 10 points. Four and a half minutes left in the game. Second and 13. Miller on the out pattern to Heller, incomplete. Oh. And Miller took a hit. See, the read that Miller has is the short. You always, as a quarterback, think short first because the short guys are give you the quickest reads because linebackers jump them quick. You see it, and then you go to the second guy. So you always start off reading short, then you go medium, then you go long. Miller came out. He should have read his linebacker who had the tight end Heller covered and gone down to Michael Haynes who had a 15-yard curl route. And I'm talking wide open. But he didn't, so it's third down and 13. The ball still at midfield. Four and a half minutes to play. Mike Welcher, no. Out of bounds. He did not have control before he went out of bounds. So it'll be an incompleted pass and bring up fourth and 13 for Atlanta. Saw this earlier. That's the deep sideline off of the rollout, but that pass is well covered short and certainly well covered deep. There's no way in the world that that Miller should have thrown that Clifford Hicks had to actually had the receiver covered by, covered by himself with Wilshire underneath man two guys on one no way. So Atlanta has to go for it fourth and 13 at the 50 yard line 422 left to play with the Rams leading 31 21. This should be a zone so all he's got to do is find the seam. And a whistle on the snap. I don't know whether the Falcons took too much time or what. We'll find out from Dale Hamer. With two seconds back on the clock, the correct time is 4.22. 4.22. So the side judge who keeps the official time noticing that the clock wasn't right. So now it's been corrected. Kind of a tough time for that to happen for the Falcons. You got a fourth down and 13. You get all geared up for the play, and they stop you on the snap. Yeah, what would have been even worse is that had Miller been able to snap the ball off and take two steps, you would have had the release of all the receivers and been able to kind of, in your computer that you were given early in the week, say, oh, when they do this, this is what they have. So now they probably have to go in and change the play. Fourth 
first and 13 from midfield. Incomplete. It looked like it might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was. It was intended for the tight end Ron Heller. And Kevin Green appeared to get a hand on it. So the Rams take over on downs at midfield. Well, I don't think it would have made any difference had Heller caught this pass because it was only an eight-yard sideline, and 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 he would have, you know, he had to run through the entire defense to make the first down. Let's just let's check it out. Miller looks to his left, sets up short, nice pocket there. Plenty. Duke's doing a fine job, and then there's a the throw back. But as you notice, the tight end Heller was only downfield about six to eight yards, and had he caught it, he would have had to run through about six guys to, to pick up the first down. Sean Miller knocked it down the second time he's done that. And the Rams go back on offense with Greg Bell, who already has over 100 yards, caring for a big gain on first down. Evan Cooper, the strong safety, and Scott Case make the tackle in the secondary. Coming up on four minutes remaining in the game, 31-21 Los Angeles. And the Rams, who started slowly and at times ineffectively, finally got it going, Terry. They had three what you would consider to be strong, successful drive. Right. They they got the big play on uh, on the hail mary at the half. They got then they had the, they were the benefactors of, of penalties that, that and and when they had the third down that was incomplete. There was a penalty against the Falcons which gave the the Rams the first down. But second half they certainly have played much better. Second down and one. Bell getting the first down and spinning for more as he gets inside the 40. Now, see, this is what Robinson wanted. This is what he was fearing that would not happen with Zampezi's offense, the fact that they would throw the ball so much that when it came time to kill the clock or win the game in the fourth quarter running it, they couldn't do that because their offensive linemen had become passers and not run blockers. But with the balance now that they had in 88, it's carrying over now. And with Bell, they're able to, a passing offense, to be able to move the ball, running the football to kill the clock. I think last year, what was their percentage of passing? 51% pass to 49% run, which is pretty good balance. About as balanced as you can get. First and 10 from the Atlanta 37. Bell again, following Irv Panky. For a gain of about five, Tony Casillas on the tackle. Well, next weekend, CBS Sports College football coverage will be at Boulder, Colorado, where the Fighting Illini of Illinois will take on the Buffaloes of Colorado, Colorado 2-0 already this year. That's next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, Saturday, right here on CBS Sports. Timeout Atlanta stopping the clock with 2.23 left to play in the game. There's a quarterback, not to get off this game, but there's a quarterback in Illinois, a Jeff George kid that was the hot, hottest thing out of Indiana and, or, and, and went to Purdue, and he didn't pan out there when Akers came in he said hasta luego I said, Akers is from Texas they're going to run it and he transferred to Miami and said whoops they got Walsh down here he says bingo I'm going back I'm going to Illinois yeah that's where I'm going so he's up at Illinois and I saw him the other night man what a gun he's got and of course it's unfortunate that Colorado they got that young quarterback that's fighting cancer yep. in August the, uh, he's, been, he's been to practice he comes to the games and the, the guys are you know I mean he's just been a tremendous inspiration to to the team out there. And speaking of Purdue and quarterbacks, there are three Purdue quarterbacks in this game. I bet you I can name them. All right, let's have it. Well, Everett, of course. All right. Scotty Campbell. All right. How's that? One more to go. Oh, I thought that was three. <laughs> <laughs> How about Mark Herman? That's, that's exactly who I was going to say. <laughs> Perfect. Bell again. Short yardage this time. Stopped short of the 30 by Jesse Thuggle. And Ben Thomas. Once again, coming up next, Yvonne Lendl and Boris Becker, the top two seeds in the U.S. Open, squaring off for the men's championship. CBS Sports coverage of the last two weeks culminating with a great final matchup. And then later tonight on CBS, it'll be 60 Minutes, of course, then Murder, She Wrote. She Wrote and the CBS Sunday movie, Paradise, The Gathering of Guns special two-hour episode with Gene Barry, Hugh O'Brien, and John Schneider. So you can keep it right here for the rest of the day on CBS. Big Rams fan in Los Angeles, David and Suzanne Gertrudson, 11-week-old daughter, 
Joanna Joy, good friends of mine. They love this guy here, Everett. Joanna's birthday today, so I want to say happy birthday. That's the way they say it when they're that age, too. Birth? Birthday. Is that what I said, birth? Well, our, both our daughters <laughs> say that. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> ah. Isn't that what your precious little Rachel would say? Daddy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daddy. From the 30. Third down and four. Bell, who's been doing it all, gets about three. It'll be about a yard short of the first down. Coming to the two-minute warning. And the Rams holding on to that football and a 10-point lead. Atlanta has used all of their timeouts. We'll be back for the final two minutes here in Atlanta with the Rams leading by 10. The Atlanta Falcons, who the last half of last season gave up an average of 12 points per game, have been hit for 31 here as we reach the final two minutes of the game. Yeah, but I, you know, don't read into that. What I mean, I know it's 31 points, but let's look at all the, you know, let's look at the Hail Mary and let's look at penalties. Let's look at a hot, humid day. Uh, let's... Let's look at all of these things. Let's look at an offense that couldn't go out and, and go 80 yards and eat up 10, you know, 10 minutes on the clock. So I, I, I certainly wouldn't look, look down on this Atlanta defense at all. Fourth down and a yard to go. And Everett Got takes and going to throw it. And he has it to Pete Holohan. Holohan with a first down and inside the 10. John Rady ran him down. So the Rams pull a Holahan. fast one here. Okay, Pat Carter comes in motion. Holohan is, is another tight end. Two tight ends line up on the se same side with Holohan down. He just punched his guy and then came off. And the play action froze the linebackers. And man, there's nobody out there. That's just a great call. A big play that not only keeps the ball in the Rams' hands, but eats up more of the clock and gives them a first and goal at the seventh. Uh, do you run it here or do you throw it? What do you do with a minute 15? No, I'd run it since it's first down. Okay. Clock running with a minute 10 left to play. Greg Bell He's trying to cut back, gets a yard to the six in the grasp of Rick Bryan. Bell now with 126 yards on 26 carries. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. Today's game produced by David Michaels. Today's game was directed by Andy Kendall. And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. The clock running with 35 seconds left to play, and the Rams in no hurry to get back up to the line of scrimmage, leading by 10. And this should be the final play, as Atlanta has no timeouts remaining. Gaston Green cutting it back. It's inside the five. The ball stripped. No whistle. It's still loose. Atlanta picking it up. Another, Another lateral. Another lateral. And finally, the ball is covered at the 29. Four seconds left on the clock, and the Falcons got all of that they could. Right. See, in the last two minutes of a football game, in the fourth quarter, the only person that can recover a fumble is the guy that fumbled. And that time, it would have been the running back, Green. He fumbles. He's the only one that can pick this ball up and recover it. No one else can recover it. But the Falcons, of course, <laughs> they did a good job of that. <laughs> a la California, here we come. Look at this. There's another little lateral. There's one by Green. Let's pick it up. Let's have some more fun. Yeah, here, take it. I don't yeah, want to go. <laughs> pass. By these. That's Up good stuff there. That's we'll highlight decline. Thing. The ball will be put in play at the spot of the fumble. The spot of the fumble. So it cannot be advanced in spite of all the efforts of the Atlanta Falcons. The ball at the 18. They will have it, but only four seconds remain, and they are down by 10. So JR and company, figuring that they've got a shot at the Super Bowl, you got to win the first one before you can win them all, and they will win the game today. Well, nothing like winning that first game. I played in a bunch of first games when we were defending champions or whatever, and there's, it's, you're so nervous, and you need to win that first game. It just does world of good for your confidence. It looks like today the Rams are going to get that first victory, and it, it certainly means a lot. 
That fumble by Gaston Green, incidentally, the first turnover in this go in this game today. Well, he had fumbleitis in preseason, and that's one of the reasons a lot of people felt like that, even though uh, Bell had held out, Bell does not fumble, and Green does, and and so consequently, uh, Green doesn't start. Green gets a chance and fumbles again. What should be, barring a penalty on the defense, the final play of the game. Miller throws it quickly to Sean Collins, and the Rams are playing 20 yards off the ball. It's a big game, but that's about all as time runs out. Marion Campbell and company losing their opener, and John Robinson and the Los Angeles Rams defeat the Falcons 31 to 21. Rams again showing the balance, Terry, that may be what takes him back to the playoffs. 